My first direct contact with JVJ was in 1988 when as president of the Philosophy Society and the first year undergraduate at NUS, I invited him to speak on political freedoms in Singapore on campus. That was 21 years ago. NUS had a set of bureaucratic procedures that had to be negotiated if you wanted to invite opposition figures to campus to speak. These bureaucratic processes do not make inviting opposition party representatives on campus easy. At the same time, the main challenge were also staff members as well as fellow undergraduates who practice self-censorship and try to undermine or withdraw support when inviting opposition figures on campus to speak. Nevertheless, the few of us involved in the organization of that talk succeeded and JBJ spoke to a full house at Lecture Theatre 11 on campus and the talk was reported on the front page of the NUS Student Union newspaper. In the years following, I had other contact occasions with JBJ. We had conversations over writing styles and article submissions to the Hammer at his office in the former Colombo Court building. I followed his campaign in the 1991 general elections, attended his walkabouts and rallies. In the later part of the 90s, like many Singaporeans, I too bought a book or two from him as he began his island-wide book-selling effort to clear his bankruptcy arising from politics. Seeing that this was a solitary effort in 2001, I, through the Think Center, had the opportunity to organize with several others the Save JBJ rally. We had to navigate red tape at the various national licensing authorities and eventually managed to pull the event off. The challenges of organizing the Save JBJ rally is a matter of public record, as it was reported in the media and have since been analyzed in academic writings on Singapore politics. Because of the interaction with JBJ, it was quite natural that several of us from the Think Center trooped over to the Workers' Party where he had been the Secretary General for over 30 years. Work abroad kept me away from Singapore, but in 2003, it was my pleasure and privilege during one of my trips back home to prepare and deliver the citation for JBJ when he received the Think Center's Human Rights Award. When JBJ passed on in late 2008, I was again abroad and like many others penned a tribute to him on my blog and joined the Facebook page set up to commemorate him. Since JBJ's passing, there have been several initiatives to commemorate him, institutionalize his democratic legacy and acknowledge his contribution to the democratic cause. These efforts are being undertaken by those who have known him and work closely with him and also by others who find it symbolic to evoke his name as a democratic ideal. At the same time, we have also begun to witness hurdles to efforts to commemorate JBJ institutionally while others try to cast aspersions on his political work. Given the nature of Singapore's political system and its impact on political culture, there will always be some who will try to cast JBJ and his democratic efforts in negative light. The only way to combat this is to ensure democratic values, ideas, efforts and institutions are constituted in Singapore and to show up those who would paint democratic principles and democrats in unflattering ways. Seeing all of you here today, I am confident that institutionalizing JBJ as a democratic Singapore, a democratic symbol in Singapore for all Singaporeans will not be a problem moving forward. I want to end my tribute to JBJ today by sharing with you two updates. One, I'd like to inform you that I have chosen not to renew my Workers' Party membership which lapsed on 31st December 2009. Two, that some of us, inspired by JBJ, had submitted an application to the Registrar of Society in late April 2009 
to set up a political association called Singaporeans for Democracy. It is approaching months now since we submitted our application and we are still waiting to hear from the registrar about the outcome. Nevertheless, we have been actively following up on our application in the last months by calling up the relevant officers at the registrar for updates. In our last call to the registrar's office last week, we were informed that the results of our application will be known in two weeks, that is mid-January 2010. I hope to make more information publicly available as soon as we hear from the registrar. I was, like many of you, saddened by JBJ's demise, but I am also someone who prefers to look forward and ahead. JBJ has done good political work and this is something we need to build on. More importantly, the tone of the struggle needs to be borne in mind. If you want to take on the PAP, it should never be on a bended knee. That much I have learned from JBJ and I thank you.